Hello friends, today is the last uh, session of uh, this particular soft skills course and we will be dealing, dealing with applying soft skills to workplace. This is the concluding talk, the concluding lecture and uh, in this we are going to, of going to take stock of what we have done so far, their relevance in the context of soft skills new things that we have explored together and uh, things that we have not explored, but for which we are going to definitely give some links and provide some material. And then we would be looking at taking a survey, sharing with you the references and then thanks. So, the first thing that we are going to do today is look at what we have covered so far which are the broad areas that we have covered and why have we covered them, a kind of a recapitulation in order to understand the significance of what we have done. In that sense, you can consider this as a summary of all the 40 lectures that we have done. And uh, anybody who goes through this would be able to identify which areas uh, need to be covered again, maybe from the perspective of the examination, maybe if you intend to do specific things or intend to achieve specific uh, uh, let us say skills, which lectures will have to be again revisited and which points need to be discussed. So, the first point uh, I would like to make is that we started off with the communication environment and I believe that uh, that was very relevant uh, since we realized that the communication environment consists of uh, a wide uh, range of channels like voice, text, non-verbal communication and uh, facial expressions, even our dress code, so many channels through which we communicate. We looked at different models of communication like uh, the finite model, the linear model, but the more complex uh, infinite model as well, where we discussed how the communication process continues endlessly. We also identified what hinders communication, what inhibits communication, what encourages communication. We looked at the concept of ambiguity, looked at the possibilities of various kinds of interpretations, how the same thing can be understood in various different ways and we kind of contextualized and conceptualized this right at the beginning. So, I hope that uh, that was necessary uh, and I hope that uh, you agree with me that that kind of created a base and uh, kind of justified why is it that in the context of soft skills communication uh, understanding the communication environment is so very relevant. Then we moved on to listening and speaking skills. In listening and speaking skills we focused primarily on certain techniques which later on got related to the concept of empathy and listening and empathetic listening for instance was one area which we focused on to a very great extent, because we talked about uh, other kinds of listening which are appropriate for uh, let us say professional contexts uh, like uh, group discussions and meetings, but uh, we essentially focused on a kind of listening which is more appropriate for interpersonal communication. And as uh, you will discover as we proceed that kind of listening is very, very relevant in the context of development of your soft skills and your abilities and your sensitivities. We moved on to conversation skills, where you were told about how is it that you respond to spe specific people, so that we made a transition from listening to speaking and uh, how is it uh, when to speak, how to speak, what are the elements to be touched upon, how to be sensitive to other people, how to be assertive in, the cons in certain contexts. And in the context of conversation, Professor Giri also spoke about spe speaking in groups, speaking styles communication styles and these were relevant uh, because they made you aware of how we are different in the different ways that we speak based on different uh, predilections, uh, let us say basic inherent features, orientations and attitudes and what works in which context. That was the key ingredient in those talks which told us where and how conversation works. We moved on to presentation skills and I must say that in the context of presentation skills, 
we looked at the entire model in a very holistic way. We talked about the presentation context, the audience, the, the theme that has to be taken up, how it has to be developed. We talked about body language, voice and other parameters in the context of uh, presentations. We also talked about something which took us slightly in a different direction exploring the concepts of multimedia and we will take that up and we will justify why it was relevant and why it will be relevant in the future as well. We talked about group dynamics, how different components of a group behave, how we have social and pro-social behavior and uh, which are the components which have to be taken into consideration. And I believe uh, the talks by Professor Giri and Professor Suar in related areas made us aware of the fact that uh, understanding group dynamics is very, very important uh, because that makes us better communicators, better at handling different kinds of situations, for instance conflicts, persuasions and various other places when working in a various other components when working in a team. We moved on to nonverbal communication and we did that fairly elaborately because we talked about nonverbal communication in the context of presentation, we talked about nonverbal communication even before that in the presentation uh, uh, in the context of listening and conversation. And uh, we talked about two distinctively different components of nonverbal component uh, com communication, the body language, gestures and postures and facial expressions. And I hope that you benefited from the surveys and the various interactions that we had. And uh, in all these cases, we learned a lot of things together, we shared ideas together. We moved on then to relationship building and uh, in that context, probably something which we did which generally people do not cover under uh, soft skills could have been relevant like empathy. So, relationship building was taken care of again by uh, our professors, Professor Soar and Professor Giri and uh, different components of it. And I hope that you benefited from the various theories as well as the application and dimensions that you learned from these which tell us how is it that we build up relationships, what are the different significant components in the context of relationship building, uh, what succeeds, what fails and hopefully they can be applied in the context of work. We talked about conflict resolution, a very, very important component which takes into consideration a lot of things that we learned earlier like listening skills and speaking skills, uh, group dynamics, non-verbal communication because through these you understand when aggression is taking place and you are realize how you are supposed to respond to that. And conflict resolution to a very great extent can would depend on your emotional intelligence, your ability to understand pe other people's emotions, guess what would work with them and uh, hence those areas which were covered uh, must have been of great use to all of you. Because you see that uh, the earlier lessons kind of help you in understanding conflict resolution in a more significant way and add to that emotional intelligence and you are able to understand things again in a more significant way. Change management is something which has to do with the ability to cope with change in a world where things move very fast. I remember a long time back when I started reading Elvin Toffler and read about future shock. I read some of some of it. Uh, it was a very, very radical new idea. Today we live within the framework of future shock and uh, what it basically means is that change is very rapid and it is an accelerating change, change which is happening more fast. Interestingly, you see that uh, that brings us back to or reminds us of the Buddhist concept of change because the Buddha told us that everything is impermanent, everything is perpetually changing. However, that realization that everything is perpetually changing and experiencing it in life every day where you see that uh, if you have not uh, used PowerPoint for two years, then probably your old fashioned you have forgotten uh, what has happened and uh, you do not really know the new things that have come up. I remember that a long time back, 10 years back, I used to do animation with Corel Draw and flash and today it is absolutely uh, Greek to me because the new software, the basics remain the remaining the same timeline and a few other things like that. So many things have changed. How is it that we cope with this change? How do we understand? How do we, we position ourselves? 
how is it that stability is something which one has to find from within oneself within this change. Now, this becomes a very important ingredient and Professor Suar has looked deeply into this particular area. And as I told you emotional intelligence, empathy which we will be looking at a little later, all these help in the context of change management, ability to cope with change, ability to come up with radical new measures, new strategies in the context of change is something which is very relevant in the context of uh, soft skills. Creativity, we talked about creativity and uh, I believe that change management and creativity are very closely interlinked because you see that uh, the ability to cope with conformity as against non-conformity. That which is stable is what we can call consider uh, that which is kind of uh, uh, patterned that which we have been using routinely that is conformity, non-conformity thinking differently. Now, you see that being creative is a way of developing your ability to cope with change in a more effective way. So, these two sections though it has not been made explicitly in our talks are very closely linked together and you can link the two and come up with new interesting ideas. Be creative about how you can link change management, emotional intelligence with creativity because in our talks we did talk about emotional intelligence and creativity. Critical thinking is something which definitely is linked to creative thinking, but it is directed at problem solving and uh, you have specific methods, specific ways of doing that and I am sure that uh, whatever Professor Suar shared with you was relevant in that particular context. Motivation again is something which uh, is very, very important in the context of soft skills because you see that the very act of your listening to these videos and even listening to the last video talks speaks about your motivation. Your motivation can be of various kind. It could be as simple as being motivated to complete this course and take an exam or it could be a motivation which is uh, let us say different in the sense that you are motivated to just learn and uh, improve yourself in certain ways. So, motivation is a very, very important aspect and I hope that uh, our presentations and video lectures were relevant in those contexts. And uh, we moved on to persuasion and uh, negotiation again very closely linked with one another, very relevant in the context of groups, very relevant in the context of let us say conflict resolution and management. So, you see that uh, where all these things come into play. So, although we may not have networked them uh, which we will try to put in the last slide, these concepts are linked together. So, you see that persuasion negotiation would definitely get linked with areas like conflict resolution relationship building because and group dynamics. So, I hope that uh, you would be able to link these elements together and come up with uh, interesting uh, let us say solutions when you actually apply whatever you have learnt here in your workplace, in your college, in your university, uh, in your job, in your company wherever you are. So, uh, Stress management is another area which uh, gets linked to let us say uh, the area of uh, change tolerance uh, ability to manage change because you see that stress is something which is again a part of our everyday life generated to a very great extent because of change, generated to a very great extent because of conflicts, generated because we are not able to understand ourselves and it is a process which gets aggravated unless we take care of it. And I hope that uh, it can get linked to the concept of resilience where resilience is not only about resilience to change, resilience to stress, resilience to the various kinds of uh, things which trouble us, disturb us, conflicts and all that. And I hope that uh, you have understood the concept of resilience. In general, although this is a little out of the context resilience is something which is a significant component of most Indian people because we live within change, we live within a lot of uncertainties and uh, I have found a significant about, uh, amount of resilience when it is comes to self assessment in our students okay. and to a very great extent resilience, uh, reduction of stress and all those things get linked to relationship building. Friends, friends, families, ties of love, communication. So, you see that they are stress management 
and uh, problem solving and all these things again get linked to the earlier lectures on communication and resilience also gets linked to communication. Because if you communicate, you share, then you become resilient because your problem is solved by others. That is what we have found with many of our students. And I hope that uh, uh, the, the service that we do it did with you and the findings which we have said would also convince you of that. Work life balance is a very, very com important component and you might say that uh, it is inwardly uh, reflected because you see that at the end of the day, whatever you are learning, you are learning a lot of it for the workplace, but then work has to have its own space in your lives. Your lives are not all work, your lives consist of work as well as certain other qualities and there has to be a balance between the two. And this is something which we all seek and which we all find very difficult to manage, but the people who really manage to find work life balance are happy people. And I hope that some of you have benefited from the talk on work life balance as well. We talked about certain new areas which uh, were not a part or uh, generally are not a part of uh, many of the soft skill programs, but we thought they were relevant. Visual communication we highlighted to a significant extent and uh, we did that with the idea that we live in a visual world, an essential world of uh, multimedia and uh, in that context we talked about images, texts. We talked about sound, although I have not mentioned it, uh, I have kept it under the category of multimedia. We talked about music and the way these communicate and I felt that uh, these were important because we live in a world where all these components interact in a very, very complex with us and do manage to modify our understanding, modify our communication, modify our interactions with others. And what with the advent of social media and networks which are mediated by social media, okay, very complex networks of rapid communication throughout the world, vast communication. We find that a different kind of set of relationships, a different way of understanding these relationships is probably required. I hope you benefited from my very brief introduction to the field, uh, where I wanted to at least make you familiar with the fact that this is an area which is very, very relevant, whether we are talking about Facebook, whether we are talking about Twitter the way they significantly influence our lives and uh, I hope that uh, that also adds to your soft skills. Empathy is something which again is inwardly pointing, gets linked in a significant way to work life balance, but as we have already discussed, empathy is also something which plays a very distinctive role when it comes to uh, understanding others and hence a very, very important component of soft skills. Now, before we end this discussion, what I would like to share with you is that as we developed the course, we did a lot of brainstorming, we, we searched a number of uh, um, websites to find out which were the soft skills which were considered very significant. I will share with you the significant soft skills that were listed in various places as very relevant in the context of work and uh, let us find out what we have done and what we have not covered. These are some of the other skills in high demand, we, which we have not directly touched upon, but what I would like to do over here is to share with you how these can be interpreted or understood in the light of what we have already done. Being dependable. Now, being dependable obviously gets linked to uh, listening skills, your understanding of uh, the fundamentals of let us say uh, negotiation skills your understanding of, uh, let us say, the ability to motivate others and all that. Uh, because, but then you see that it being dependable also has an ethical consideration. Being dependable is about being honest, being reliable, being consistent. Now, to a certain extent, this can happen with emotional intelligence and it can also happen when you have a moral or ethical attitude towards life. Now, ethics or morality, which is very, very important in most workplaces is something which we could never touch upon, uh, although it is a very, very important component. And ethics or morality is not something which can be taught. We can persuade you to, we have, can try to convince you that it is very, very important. It is very significant, but in the complexities of work life, we find that there are various situations where the conflicts between our morality and uh, what we are forced to do and all such kinds of things. And 
becomes a very problematic area. We did not take it up, but as I said emotional intelligence is something which can be get linked to being dependable. It can also get linked to the ethical qualities, which some places, some, some people, some books, some authors, some sites highlight as significant and we agree that it is very significant. Coaching co-workers, improving their skills is something which can happen when we start focusing on empathy, when we start uh, looking at uh, other people's interests and when we are good communicators, a combination of these will teach us how to become good coaches. However, because we have not uh, covered it in a detailed way, you might google and search for certain sites which talk about coaching and try to link it with whatever we have done so far. As I told you, coaching would get linked with empathy, coaching link would get linked with communication skills, coaching would get linked with uh, ability to manage other people, okay, managerial skills. Fitting the company culture is something which is about change management, okay, ability to understand change, to cope with change, uh, empathy to understand what the company wants, intelligence and basic communication skills. Okay. This is a skill which uh, need not and cannot be really taught, but it can be gleaned from many of the things that we have done together. Being flexible and focused again has to do with resilience, it has to do with many of the other things we have said so far, but focusing is something which is in a different area and we have not touched upon focus in a very distinctive way. However, many of the talks that we have already given as I told you. Uh, our, fo our, our, our presentation on motivation and our top presentation on empathy can help you in this particular area. Developing, developing new work processes get very strongly linked to creativity, critical analytical thinking and problem solving and can be applied over here. Taking initiative is about motivation, you can get it linked to that. Critical observation again is get linked to critical thinking process to empathy and many other various other communication skills we have learnt and project management skill is something which has to be outside the scope of our work. Although many of the things that we have, the components we have discussed do get linked to project management in certain ways, but still we feel that probably that is something which has to be pursued as a different uh, specific course or at least a subset of a course and we agree to that, that you need to explore that separately. Computer and technical literacy is something which is a course by itself, it is relevant in the uh, as a very important component of soft skills. The very fact that you are having a part of this internet course and you are uh, completing the assignments, uh, interacting, uh, learning tells us that you are fairly competent in computers and technical literacy. Research skill is an entire different area, however, critical and creative thinking and problem solving skills can help you there. Work ethics as I told you, morality, ethics and work ethics is something which we were not able to cover, but it is a relevant area and you might look it up and as I told you it is a personality orientation, it is a question of getting motivated, uh, it is a question of um, having specific ideologies and uh, there is not much we can do about changing those. Etiquettes again is a vast area, it can start from etiquettes like etiquettes in food to etiquettes in dress codes to etiquettes of what to say and what not to say. However, the fact that we have dealt with communication tells us that you have probably developed a certain degree of sensitivity to the concept of etiquette and need to explore it maybe in a comprehensive way or a fragmented way elsewhere. Self promotion skills is something which we have not touched upon here. You might have to look elsewhere as to how to promote yourself. But the fundamentals of communication skills which tell you how you are able to communicate effectively with others, how you are able to impress others, how you are able to persuade others will to a certain extent help here. Interview skills it was not within the uh, framework of our course, however we are trying to de generate and develop certain handouts on job basics, interview and GD skills which you might read and benefit from. So, what do we want you to do? We want you to definitely take a survey uh, which uh, is there in the links and the reason for this survey is we can learn from you. You see that uh, the process of learning is a process of cooperative learning. 
all this while the surveys that we have done with you, the various discussions we have had with you teach us a lot of things. So, as hopefully you are learning a little bit from us, we are also learning a lot from you. So, if you tell us where things went right and tell us where things can improve, then we can go a long way when the next time the course is evolved in making changes and making it more beneficial for other people or even you who would be taking it again. So, for these links please check the discussion forum and here are the references that I have used to search for sites which talk about various kinds of soft skills that uh, we were talking about and which we have discussed elaborately and some of the skills the majority of the skills we have covered and some skills we have not covered and uh, we would all like to thank you. I am Priyadarshi Patnaik. I hope you have uh, been introduced to uh, Professor Vijayanath Giri, to Professor Damodeshwar and we have a team of uh, silent uh, scholars, uh, students who have uh, worked with us and you might have seen them on the discussion forum answering your questions, sharing ideas with you and uh, analyzing your surveys and so on. So, I would like to quickly introduce them to you. So, uh, there are five of them. Suchitra, Raju, Rasmiranjan and uh, we have uh, Junmuni and we have uh, um, Sravani. So, these are the five people who have helped in making this entire uh, soft skills course a success. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for being with this course throughout these eight weeks. Thank you.